Hello and welcome to the TMZ podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton. I'm Charlie Naff. And today on the show, we're discussing Kelly Clarkson's weight loss because mm-hmm. she's coming clean about how she did it. Right. A lot of people thought she was on Ozempic. Oh, oh, Ozempic. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> so she claims. <laughs> it's something similar, though. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know who's worse, you or me. Um, we got a couple of big reactions to Mother's Day posts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chris Pratt posted something interesting or didn't post something interesting. Right. And Gypsy Rose. Did post and got a ton of death threats. Yes, posted talking about her mother. Uh, Tyrese, oh, this is just the funniest video. Tyrese bailed on a concert like Mm mid-performance because he realized there was a process server there to serve him papers. Right. For some kind of lawsuit, unclear exactly what it is, but he booked it out of there. And everyone was like, wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) Love hanging. And finally, we'll discuss this portal, the one that's in New York and Dublin, uh, that keeps getting shut down because people do inappropriate stuff. Yeah, new art installation, and it took a turn. To begin with, though, Kelly Clarkson has admitted, some people think finally, but she's admitted to taking a weight loss drug. She was talking to Whoopi Goldberg on her show, Kelly Clarkson Show. Let's listen to a bit of their conversation now. Oh, mine is a different one than people assume, but I, I ended up having to do that too because yeah. my, my blood work got so yeah, yeah, bad. You, yeah. and, and it's great for people like us who have, you know, issues. My doctor chased me for like two years yeah. and I was like, no, I'm afraid of it. Yeah. I already have thyroid yeah. problems. I was afraid and everybody thinks yeah. it's Ozempic. It's not. It's something else. But but it's it's something that aids in helping break yeah. down the sugar. Obviously, right. my body doesn't do it right. Oh. Everybody thinks it's Ozempic, but it's not. It's something else. Right. Very interesting timing. Just recently, she said that she lost weight because she was on a protein-heavy diet and that she was walking a lot. And everyone was (laughs) like, come on. I mean, it's no secret that everybody in Hollywood seems to be taking an Ozempic-like uh, shot right. to try to lose weight. Um, and look, it's okay if you if you are if you want to take it, you should be able to take it. But I think it is a radioactive topic, and obviously there's a lot of vanity in Hollywood. So you have people taking shot drugs like this that probably don't need it. But she even said, like at one point, her heaviest was over 200 pounds. But I think people don't like the lack of transparency, like denying, 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 saying that you've lost weight because of walking. But you shouldn't have to disclose your medical history to the public. But then don't say anything. Don't try to chalk it up to, oh, just a high protein diet and some walking changed my life. (laughs) Because that's misleading. Then you become not believable and you're the lead person of a talk show we're supposed to trust you. We're supposed to like you. But when right. you start like saying dicey things and people kind of lose their trust in you, it's not really good for you. I agree with that. Um, do you? What do you make of just like all of this cheating thing? I think a lot of it comes from, I think a lot of these weight loss drug hate comes from sort of skinny people trying to safeguard being skinny. Like I worked my way here. <laughs> you were like, you know in inverted commas, cheating your way here. I don't think it's cheating. I think like whatever you can take to make yourself healthier and happier, honestly, you know, honestly, is well, the thing. I think people don't like the, that you're saying like, oh, I'm healthier because I'm on Ozempic. Usually, yes, people are taking like the weight loss drug, but doesn't necessarily mean they're changing their diet habits. Well, it, um, doesn't it mean they're just eating less? Yeah, eating less. But I mean, you can still eat like a bag of chips and lose weight if you're only eating a bag of chips a day. Right, right. It doesn't mean like you're actually contributing to like what your body needs. So you don't know how healthy someone really is, even if they're right. not lost a lot and of weight. And look, yeah. it is a lot better on your body to lose that extra hundred pounds or whatever, like better on your knees, better on your, your whole body can function a little bit better. Maybe you're not as lethargic as you used to be. But I think in Hollywood, it's such a hot button topic because everyone here is vain. Everyone here wants to be skinny. Everyone wants to look good in front of the camera, the red carpet. So the issue is when you actually aren't overweight and you're somehow getting access to these weight loss drugs, 
um, to look better, like in a little dress. You mm. know what I mean? And then obviously this, it's technically not a weight loss drug. It's for people that have diabetes or like other issues. And this is just like a factor in that. And now those people don't have access because everybody in Hollywood wants to be skinny. Right, right. Do you hear, I, I've heard of some, like a lot of high profile women taking it, like Rebel Wilson said she's taken it. Oprah obviously has said she's taken a weight loss drug. Right. Kelly Clarkson. You don't hear about many guys having taken. I'm sure Tracy they are. Morgan, Tracy Morgan's on Tra this list. Tracy Morgan's taken it. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure guys are. I just think that maybe guys are less willing to come forward and say they are. It's almost more embarrassing. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if that's true or not. What do you think? Yeah, I think, but also like guys don't have as much pressure to be skinny as women do. Like we've talked about it on this show, like the world is not kind to older women. Well, the world is also <laughs> not kind to older, thick women. Right. So, I mean, there's so many factors where we're, our beauty is our, our worth in this world. And so for men, it's like, you, there's like the whole thing, the dad bod, like that's accepted, mm. you know, the mom bod is not accepted. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about that, but maybe, maybe <laughs> it should yeah. be, it should be. Well, good on Kelly Clarkson because, you know, she's come clean now and hopefully- Has she? Oh, mean? it's she's gatekeeping. She's like, it's not Ozempic, it's something else. Okay, just say you're on Manjaro or whatever. Show us your medical record. No, no, just say <laughs> it, whatever you're on. Okay, on to our next story. Oh, this is funny. Tyrese was performing in Georgia, and mid performance, a security guard comes up to him, taps him on the shoulder, whispers something in his ear. And then he jumps off the stage into the crowd <laughs> and like books it out of there. He's gone. And, and we've just learned what the security guard whispered, that there's a process server backstage, assumedly, because he went to the, jumped off the stage and ran into the crowd. Yep. It's so funny because the crowd thinks he's coming for like a special moment in, yeah. in the mosh pit and he just keeps walking. I love <laughs> you guys. Let's listen to some of the footage now. gone like magic just walks out with a big crew and you see everyone all the fans running over because they think that you know he's just he's having a moment but he's not and yeah turns out there was a process server i, I think he must have been backstage the security guard must have said look there's someone backstage here to serve you and it comes from uh, an episode of the breakfast club mm -hmm. and on the breakfast club uh, the podcast uh, uh the guy named brian barber Mm -hmm. said he was sort of like defamed by Tyrese because uh, on that show, Tyrese claimed that Brian was holding uh, interview footage hostage. hostage. It's kind of a confusing case. But anyway, the this Brian Barber wants $10 million out of um, Tyrese for defamation. So that's the case that they were trying to serve Tyrese for. Yeah. And this is kind of what process servers do. They find, so if you're a public figure, they find where your next show is and they're going to make sure that they give you those papers. But Tyrese obviously wanted nothing to do with this case at all. He just takes off. So I doesn't look like he even got the documents, right? And now he's jetted off to Kuwait. So, I mean, he's out of out of the country now. So the, yep. the, the process server can't get him. But what a bad process server, honestly. That was my takeaway. Why? You are not supposed to ID yourself or right. have security know there's a process server backstage. Because that's how all of this happens. You like you're supposed to pose it like as like a delivery pizza delivery guy, or yeah, something like that. Like, hey, I've got your pepperoni. And, but what if the guy go. was trying to go up on stage? Because you we've seen other people who was it like somebody else got served on stage, like in the middle of their speech. Yeah, I want to say Olivia Wilde or like some was it, it Olivia, was Wilde? Olivia Wilde? Wow, yeah. look at my memory. She got served when she was on stage. Right. I think regarding like her ex, yes, right, yes. Jason Sudeikis. Um, so maybe this guy was trying to go up on stage and security was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's like, oh no, bro, I'm a, I'm a process server. And then they're like, Ugh. I, I, there needs to be a TV show about process servers because the different ways and techniques they use to try to like, you got to get that person to identify themselves. Like, yes, I am Tyrese. 
and then you go, here you go, here are the papers. But yep. the different tactics they use, I, I just imagine their sort of meetings at the start of the day, like, mm -hmm. how are you going to get that guy? How are you going to get that girl? And it's just like all the creative things they do. By the way, apparently Tyrese had three songs left. He yep. didn't even like finish at all. I hope, and usually I feel like when you're performing, you leave the the hits for the for the end. Yeah. So I don't know if he if that's the case and people didn't hear the songs they really wanted to hear, but... Do you get a refund wow. if you're in the crowd? I mean, you should. I, I would should. say I didn't hear this song and this song. And then now Tyrese is going to get served by all these people. Like, <laughs> yeah. I want my money back. Well, people are already upset. They're tweeting about it, tweeting at him, commenting in his, in his like, on his posts on social media. Could you, conserve, could you conceivably dodge a process server for life if you just, like, never, like, really identify yourself and then you never have to go to court? I'm sure you can. There should be a TV show about that, too. There should. There should. There should be a TV show about everything. I think you're on to something, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you very of much. Of course. Okay. On to our next story. Uh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day has come and gone, but people are upset. People are upset <laughs> with Chris Pratt for yep. snubbing Anna Faris, and they're upset with Gypsy Rose for shouting out her mother that she aided in killing. <laughs> yeah. So to start with Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt left out Anna Faris from the Mother's Day post. He For a second time. For a second time, he shouted out Catherine Schwarzenegger, his, his wife right now and baby mama, mm -hmm. and um, Kathy Pratt, his own mother. But he left out Anna, who he has an 11-year-old son with Jack. And people were understandably sort of confused and sort of like, if you're going to shout out all the mother figures in your life. Anna's like a big part of your life. And also... To, and they were married for a while. And yeah, they were married for a while. And she was kind of, when they got together, she was more famous than he was. Right. And they were an it couple for a while as he got these different roles. And then eventually they broke up. But Chris Pratt's forever going to be associated with Anna Faris just because that's of kind of how we came to know him. They were together when we... And he Anna Ferris is so beloved too. Like you think she would just be the best mom, the best wife. And it kind of like doesn't look great for Chris, right? It's like right when he became famous, all of a sudden their marriage fell apart. I mean, mm. I don't know if that's the case, but it appeared that way in the public. So I definitely think she was deserving as of some kind of recognition on Mother's Day. They must like hate each other. Yeah, it must like, be really bad. Unless must... she said to him, don't ever post me, not even on Mother's Day which I can't see her doing, <laughs> right, <laughs> but right. I mean, it's possible. Yeah, things must be awkward between them if you're not just going to add a picture of her in the, like, the, slow, the, the, the slide. Right, and even Tom Brady, somebody who is like in a really sticky situation with Giselle and his other ex, Bridget, because of all the roast stuff, he even posted them. Yes. Granted, they were like old recycled photos, but that's fine. Like, at, least at least he acknowledged. Totally. I mean, these are the mother of your children. I feel like you should want to be like, regardless of what happened between you two, at the end of the day, this is your child's mother. Like something, anything, something sweet. And Gypsy Rose did a TikTok where she talked about on Mother's Day, she, there, there's, there's several women in her life that she adores and that help her um, and she shouts them out. But she also does a lengthy sort of, I choose to see the good in my now deceased mother, right. biological mother. I, I, I think of the good in her on days like today. I hope she's in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, and people sort of obviously sort didn't of like that. Didn't love that because of everything that went down and she aided in her murder. Um, but I, I, I can understand why Gypsy did it and that she still has complicated feelings about her. Yeah. And she's in a lot of therapy. She's trying to work through everything that she experienced and, you know, I actually spoke to her about this and she said that she's been getting death threats because of the Mother's Day post. People have been telling her, like actually threatening her, saying they're going to come and like kill her, that she should go hang herself, like all these things. And Terrible. she's just been reporting all of them. And we have like even um, like a video showing all the people that she's been reporting. But look, she said that she didn't mean any ill will in this post. She was just simply trying to tell people like, who has been there supportive of her in her life, which is her stepmom, Christy, and then her new boyfriend, Ken's mom as well, she shouted out. And she basically said that during Mother's Day, the death anniversary of Dee Dee, and then also Dee Dee's birthday, those days are the hardest for Gypsy. Mm. But on those days, she just tries to not think of the abuse. She tries to not think of the murder. She tries to just reflect, think of the good things of her mom and just hopes that her mom is proud of her for for things like 
growing up, getting her own bank account, getting her GED and things like that. And I think no matter what she says, people are going to be upset. If she didn't say anything at all on Mother's Day, I think people would have been True. upset too. True. Okay, on to our almost new segment. I don't know if you've seen this viral story of a portal in New York and Dublin. So it's like a circular video, which is a live stream between the two countries. 24 hours a day, live stream. And, and it's an art installation, kind of meant for fun. Like, let's show you New York. We'll show you Dublin. <laughs> and people are taking it way too far. Like this girl here flashing her boobies. Yeah, an OnlyFans model got it shut down because she jumped up to the portal and flashed all those lucky I think she Irish said people. she said they're her homegrown potatoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which I guess I have homegrown raisins then. Those are potatoes. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so she flashed them and then an organizer like shut it down and it's been They were having, mad. They've happened to shut it down for several re several times now. Like uh, someone in Dublin put their phone up to the camera and showed like 9-11. So that's obviously I really... mean, this is just why we can't have nice things. Right. People will always abuse it, you know? Everyone's having swear words on their phone they hold up. Mm -hmm. I think it's a cute and cool idea in general, right. like seeing to the other side of the world live. But yeah, everyone's going to find a way to sort of like, how do I get Abuse it, be inappropriate. Or something like that out of it. And this lady did. This OnlyFans that lady. Yep. And I mean, I'm sure now she's probably like getting a lot of the subscribers. Irish followers. Yeah. Uh, Irish followers. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Let's do your famous segment, Charlie, today in history. <laughs> hey, have a lot of fun ones for you today. Okay. Um, so we'll start with a sad one though. 1998, this day, Frank Sinatra died. Oh, Frank Sinatra. Were you ever a fan of his? Um, no. But Aww, it's still sad. He's iconic. He's, he is the iconic. He was yes. definitely like one of the biggest artists of all time. Yes, in the Rat Pack. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, Rat Pack. Great knowledge. I love it. Um, 1998 also, this day, the last episode of Seinfeld, Seinfeld aired. So the last episode of Seinfeld and Frank Sinatra was on the same very day. Yes. Day. Lots uh, of news that day. That's a complicated day in like New York, you know? Right, right. Wait, why New York? Is, is that where Frank Sinatra's from? I thought he was always around here because all the places here are like, oh, Rat Pack was here. Rat Pack was here. Like all these okay. restaurants advertise Disregard that. my comment then. No, me, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also we're going way back here. 1850. Oh, what a day. This day, the first U.S. patent for the dishwashing machine was issued. So dishwashing machine. In what year? Kind of born this day. 1850. How did we have dish? No. How did we have dishwashers in 1853? Did we really have eight dishwashers? 1850, not 1853. I don't know why I said three, but how did we have dishwashers <laughs> back then? It was the U.S. patent at that time. So oh, maybe when did, it when did we little... get electricity? Do you know? Uh, we got Dumb and Dumber. On I know, podcast. I know. It's, I should... it's getting worse and worse. <laughs> I can't believe that dishwashers speaking that of, uh, got some. Speaking of dumb, got some more dumb for you. Okay. Today is Dance Like a Chicken Day today. Huh. So make sure you do a little... Oh, back, I like back, that. Back. Is that a chicken? Yeah, that's a chicken. Yeah, okay, okay. Show me again. You do it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I regret saying that. <laughs> okay, um, And then lastly. Oh, some, sorry. Not done. You're no, not done. almost. Almost. Some, one more left. Some birthdays. Birthdays okay. today. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh. Facebook guy. Right. Okay. Kate Blanchett. Oh, Ozzie. Actress. Ozzie. Ozzie actress. Uh, and George Lucas. He's 80 today. Star Wars. Dun, 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 I'm going to go to Star Wars land tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's right. I can't believe you're leaving me tomorrow. What I am know. I going to do without you? I'm sure there'll be someone here jumping at the chance to co-host with you. Uh, or it'll just be me. Just reading the news. <laughs> reading today in history. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to miss you, Charlie. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> and we'll see you guys. I'll see you on Thursday. Charlie, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, bye.